Akhtar Bacha is the chair of Global Washington. Akhtar, that's a big, huge job, isn't it? First of all, Stan, thank you very much for being part of the Global Washington community. Rainmaker TV has done an amazing job and your contribution to showcasing the work of the international development community is just fantastic. And that's just one way we bring the world together. So thank you very much for being such a strong supporter of the work that we all do. Well, we're happy to do that, and here's why. Because there is so much that Global Washington is doing, but it's a volunteer position as the chair, right? Yeah. But why do you do that? Look, I mean, I think that, you know, everything that we do has to lead to some change. Mm -hmm. Everything, as any human being, Everything that we do, whether we get paid for it or don't get paid for it, has to do because there is some change that is going to happen. And that change is going to be for you too, but also has to be for the society as a whole. Global Washington is just one vehicle for me to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, look, I came into this country because I won three lotteries. I won the education lottery that I got admitted. I got a financial lottery because somebody decided to give me a scholarship and I got the visa lottery because the US government decided to admit me into this country. So once you've kind of got that, you kind of think that you know your life got changed because of generosity and therefore you have to be able to be generous in what you do and that's why I do what I do. And your own experience then that came out of that was in working in several technology companies, including Microsoft. Yeah, so I'm actually an architect by training. I spent the first decade of my career teaching architecture at MIT, and then went into the development community working and starting several nonprofit organizations. And then Microsoft decided that they would like me to help them figure out how to give away money. And that's what I did for, for a decade. And now I'm back to teaching and building capacity of young people, mid-career people in the various work that I do, both as an educator and as a curator of uh, training sessions. The focus of the conference this year, it's perfect. It's on leadership. Right. Uh, how is it that Global Washington is leading global change? So, so I, I, I feel that, you know, Bill Clapp and Paula Clapp had the vision of launching Global Washington by having the foresight to look at the quality of organizations that were here that were committed to international development. And that we felt that by bringing them together as a community, we could enrich the experience for all. So Global Washington advocates, convenes, brings communities together, we help co-create things that are happening in our community. And so Global Washington's role is basically to take all the goodness that is coming out from our community, amplify it, raise certain important issues that we don't step back in our commitment to do what we do, and find ways in which we can actually bring people together so that together we can actually have more strength than if we were doing it on our own. And that's essentially what we are planning to do, you know, what we do at Global Washington. You got some rock star organizations in, in here. Who are some of the organizations that, uh, if someone were to ask you about, you know, what's the typical organization of Global Washington, what would you tell them? So, so today we had the fast pitch, and there were seven organizations there. That is really the essence of the development community in Washington. Young, small, committed organizations that are doing transformational work, whether it is Asesha University in Ghana, fundamentally changing the way in which we look at education institutions in Africa. Yeah. It's just mind-blowing, right? Or the work that Amplio are taking away interesting, easy concept of knowledge and voice dates, knowledge and storytelling as a way to build capacity. That's amazing. Movno, looking at Congo and really trying to figure out how you can change the param paradigm of a conflict-driven region into a producing region. So there are Ospria, which is really so focused right now on the emerging crisis 
between two neighboring countries with the massive amount of refugees that are pouring into Bangladesh and how do you deal with that so this is really the quality of the organizations that we have here that we need to think about that we need to support and I think that's what our community does by stepping up to do that how is Washington State then different than any other state? Because couldn't there be a global Idaho or a global Wisconsin or, or a global Tennessee? I, and I think that they should be. They should be. Because in all, all states, there are organizations that are doing that. I think that what is also an important point which was raised today at our opening plenary is that in today's such a dynamic world, we also need to understand that there is a global in our local communities. And we have to find ways to also focus on that. Right? Because, you know, Seattle is a global community and many of the local issues are impacting people who have come here from elsewhere. And so how do we meld those two together? So maybe expanding our vocabulary of what global means is not just looking outside of Washington State, but looking within Washington State and outside together. That's what Anna Marie Kossi was talking about in terms of how she thinks about educating our students about understanding the changing, changing dynamics of the world. Or what John Kerry talked about when he said, look, we have a crisis here that people are out in the open. They should just be shelters. And many of the people who are out in the open are women and kids who have come from other parts of the world who, for no fault of their own, because of this massive growth in the city, are just getting homeless. And how do we kind of think about both the global nature of our work, but also its local impact? And I think that's going to be the next phase of the interesting things that we will see come out of Seattle. And, and just so that I'm, I'm clear, uh, Global Washington is not in and of itself a relief organization. It just brings people together. So we are a membership organization. We are a membership organization of all nonprofits, foundations, academic institutions, companies that are focused on global development work. Individuals are also members of Washington, Global Washington. Mm -hmm. Our goal is as a membership organization is to provide a platform for our community to be able to share the innovative work that they do, to be able to advocate around issues and by networking come up with innovative solutions that we can jointly be able to undertake. With Global Washington itself, the focus being on leadership and leadership being different in the United States than what it was before. And I'm, and I'm really not wanting to get into the, the politics of it. It's just different. Is it that the public organizations, members of Global Washington, are taking the onus themselves to help make change, whereas government may not be doing that anymore? I think governments do what they need to do. Corporations do what they need to do. But I think what we, are talk what we are seeing in the development sector, they are stepping up to also be part of that change. And one of the things that is unique about our community is that many of them actually taste the ground that they walk on. And, and I, want to be, I want to explain what I mean by mm -hmm. I, I mean that they literally understand and are completely engaged in the community in which they want to intervene. This is not somebody that is just helicoptering in and saying, we'll drop something for you, we don't know you. They are becoming part of the community. And that's what Richard talked about from World Visions, mm -hmm. in terms of how you need to be completely engaged within the community. This is what Anna Marie Corsi talked about in terms of how she's not just leading from the front. That what does leadership look like? It looks like really deeply understanding the people that you serve. And in her case, she serves the full community, the state of Washington. Everybody in the state of Washington gets serviced by the university. And Kay talked about it, John talked about it from the same perspective of how they are really understanding what is happening in the community. 
before they take action. And I think that's the shift that we are seeing, is that leadership starts from tasting the ground that you walk on, not just imagining walking in somebody else's shoes. That's a difference. Uh, conferences oftentimes are celebrate what's happened in the past. What I'm hearing you say and what I'm hearing others say is that we're looking at what we're going to be doing in the future. What's Global Washington going to be focusing on as we go forth here? So I think one of the things that we, we are hoping Global Washington will continue to do is find new ways to engage the growing community of global citizens that are becoming part of King County and get them engaged and give them an opportunity to be engaged in global development issues. It's not just about those that have been here for a very long time. With the growth that we are seeing at Amazon and Microsoft and all of the other companies that are coming in, the young people that are coming in, the talent that is coming in, how do we find new opportunities for them to get engaged? And because they want to be engaged. Because they? they want to be engaged. But they don't want to be engaged in the traditional way that we were trained to be engaged. You know, they, they want to be actively engaged, and which is why the fast pitch is one way by which we are actually offering opportunities for younger people to get engaged by just making a connection. Give your time, give your talent. That could be as valuable than anything else. And I think that's what the younger community is looking at, and that's why we want to kind of find new opportunities to grow our membership base by providing not just a way by which people can actually talk, but by way by which we can not only get people to share, but to connect. And then through that connection, bring the richness of talent that is here in our community to fully get engaged on development issues. Well, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much, Sam. <laughs> thank you. Rainmaker believes we can change